Well, here we are, another throwback video. But we're not talking six or seven years later. As you can read, we're talking <laughs> 12 years later. This lens, this lens, the XF 60mm shooting us now wide open, as you can read. Basically ancient in internet terms, but I think it has a lot of life left in it yet. So let's talk about it. Now, there's a reason I'm unboxing it. Obviously, you know that I own it, but there's something special about the older Fujifilm gear when it comes to packaging. Not the most important thing, but something that was really, really nice way back then. Now, you get your usual booklets. I think there's another in there. And you also get a nice little cloth baggie, which is in use. So, yeah. <laughs> and then you get this, which, I mean, look at this. proper packaging for what it's worth now i know that some third party companies have started to use decent foam based packaging but you know pretty cool and yes i know i went and packed it all back up just to show you this but <laughs> it is what it is i think that is a bit of fujifilm history right there so yeah whatever now, clearly, my copy is rather well used, but that is so light. Officially, it's 215 grams, 60 centimeter close focusing, 39 mil filter thread. They call it macro, but it's a 0 0.5 times, so not true macro. So, yeah. <laughs> 91 mil full frame equivalent so you can use it as we have just for this video for some basic out and about stuff 26.6 degrees angle of view 10 elements in eight groups that nice clicky aperture ring 2.4 to 22 and then you've got your a mode two now that is still a real nice aperturing after so many years now let's just get it onto a body it happens i've got my t3 right here so you can get an idea of what's going on where's the hood now the hood all metal but does clearly double the size when i get it on properly there we go look at that solid bit of original fujifilm quality yeah <laughs> let's carry on and see how we get on with it out and about in manchester this time i had a bit of work to do up there so i thought i'd give this a little run out as it's basically spent most of its life indoors shooting actually this kind of video right now as well as my product shots and my up close product videos but i thought yeah let's just get it out and about on my little walk around manchester on the break After all these years, I still love the feel and the look of this lens. It's light, but solid, mostly metal. Yes, this hood is a bit big for shooting out in the streets, but for studio situations, it's spot on. The big question though is, what about that 12 year old autofocus? Let's have a quick look at it on my T4.
So yeah, autofocus is where the lens shows its age. It isn't a lens for the critical speedsters out there, nor is it a lens for those that don't like a little bit of noise. Regular shooting, as you can probably see there, it takes a split second extra to lock on, and it does tend to go hunting when shooting up close. In movie mode, it tends to hunt at first when you hit record, but afterwards, it's very usable. Manual focusing, interestingly, for macro work, not amazing, in all honesty, so let's get back out into the streets. few things I like about the image quality then, starting with Baka, I think it's very good. It's not magical like the original 56, but it's nice, especially in the smoother textures. Foregrounds in particular are fine to be quite fun with this one. Most of the samples in this video, as you can see, are wide open 2.4, and I think you can appreciate how well it renders. Colors, typical Fujifilm, excellent and a, another big tick for anybody who wants a lens of this type. You're definitely going to enjoy this one for the Fujifilm colors, you know, even on a dull Manchester day. I could easily shoot this JPEG only as I used to, to be fair, and be happy. Everything you've seen in this video was shot raw with just very minor tweaks to the shadows and highlights. Talking of which, the contrast is another plus point with this one, especially on these dull days. You really notice how the lens is able to pull out the details in the shadows and reproduce the scene very well or better, maybe. Using this on the previous generation sensor, such as a T4, it's top quality, but if you've tried it on the very latest, let us know. Distortion isn't particularly worth worrying about with a lens like this, and this is no exception. Honestly, it feels like I'm trying to sell the lens, doesn't it? But I'm not. This is my lens. Nobody's getting it. You have to decide if it's worth it for you 12 years down the line. That's what we're talking about today. Now, we usually start with sharpness, and I think you've already noticed it's sharp, wide open, and pretty much across the frame, when it counts. Vignetting is also a non-issue, as you can see from these samples, all wide open. Now, the lens produces that classic Fujifilm image quality that a lot of us fell in love with originally. Again, even on a dull afternoon up north, it can come up trumps. I'm not even sure if you can say that anymore, but you know what I mean. <laughs> 12 year old phrases.
The lens goes for around 500 brand new or a measly two, 250 second hand, at which price it's an absolute bargain. Yes, it's not true macro, but it's a top quality lens that'll let you get very close and get some very detailed images. If you're a patient shooter who likes to slow down, it works well as a street shooter too, or even a portrait lens. And as such, I think it's a very underappreciated lens, even, again, 12 years down the line. But these are just my thoughts. More importantly, what do you think about this lens? Let us know, and I'll see you in the comments.